Joe Lonzaga and William Dubler. Hello and welcome to our very first NASA STEM Stars video chat. We're welcome. We're happy to welcome you today. My name is Adeline Deinhart and I work at NASA Langley Research Center and I will be your host. And I am joined with Will Dobler and Joel Lanzaga who are going to be our guest engineers today. And we are so excited to get to hear from all of you and tell you a little bit about what our two engineers do here at NASA. So today we are going to start with what we do what we're here to talk about, talk about the mission that Will and Joel work on, and then we will hear some of your questions. We can't wait to hear what you would like to know about, and then we will tell you what your mission is to do at home, and then ultimately, what's their next webinar and when you can join us next time. But first, if you have any questions, please send those to us through the chat feature on YouTube. You, right where you're watching the video, underneath it, there should be an option for you to send us some questions and we can't wait to hear them. We'll get to as many as we can, but we'll just see what time allows. Now to get started, I'm going to send it over to you, Will, so we can hear a little bit about your yourself and your background. Awesome, thank you. Thanks so much for having me. It's really cool to be here. Uh, like you said, my name is Will Dobler. I, uh, I've been working at NASA for a little over two years now. I work at NASA Langley. I'm a research aerospace engineer, so I do aircraft noise acoustics. I got my bachelor's from Gustavus Adolphus College in physics with a minor in music, and I got my master's degree from Penn State in acoustics. I've always really loved music. I'm a French horn player, and some of my other hobbies, I love outdoor sports like fishing. But I think I'll take you through sort of my journey to NASA, and um, I'll hopefully help middle schoolers and high schoolers get excited about the potential that you can also work for NASA someday. So thanks again for having me. Yeah, so do you want to tell us a little bit about what you did in middle school and high school that, that helped lead you to where you're at now? Yeah, definitely. So. Um, I, I was in Boy Scouts growing up, and, uh, you know, you do lots of fun mirror pages there. I, I tried to get involved around the school, too, and, like, student council. I did a little bit of band and acting and, you know, some sports. I was never great at sports, but I did uh, cross country and soccer. And uh, you can see it in the middle there. I grew up in northwest Indiana, about an hour from Chicago. Uh, my mom's an intensive care nurse, and my dad's a band director, so he sort of helped get me into music as a kid. I have an older brother, three years older. He was always one of my best friends, and that was always a great mentor for me. And we had a golden retriever growing up. His name's Gus. He's really cute, shown there. My, uh, my first job, uh, I actually scooped ice cream at a store in Valparaiso called Pablo Velvet. Um, but... Then I uh, had a really good physics teacher in high school who, who showed me how awesome uh, physics was. And that made me want to go to my undergrad and study physics. And I found myself loving it, um, still doing music too. And I got into a couple of physics labs there. First one was a vacuum systems and laser lab doing ion trapping. And then the second one was a uh, acoustics lab where we did ultrasound, focus ultrasound acoustics. We're trying to detect cracks in jet turbine blades. And then after college, I got a naval research internship down in Port Wainimi, California. So we were doing some acoustics work there. And right after that, moved to Penn State to study uh, acoustics for my master's. And I worked with uh, Dick Sparrow, who does aircraft noise acoustics. And I ended up getting my pilot's license there. Um, after that, uh, my journey to NASA was through a NASA fellowship called the uh, A-STAR Fellowship, and then I got hired on shortly after to do Sonic Boom Acoustics at NASA Langley. That's awesome. Will, do you want to 
awesome. And I can completely understand. I started my NASA journey through an internship. So we all have different journeys. But Joel, we would love to hear about your journey and your background and how you got started with NASA. Hey, Adeline. Thanks for inviting us to briefly talk about our career. To your audience online, hello, everybody. My name is Joel Lanzaga. I am an aerospace engineer at NASA Langley Research Center in Hampton, Virginia, working on flight vehicle acoustics. In broad terms, my work is concerned with investigating noise generated by supersonic aircraft and developing methods and te technologies to mitigate the impact of the noise on human. I have a Doctor of Philosophy or PhD degree in physics from Washington State University and obtained a physics education degree for my college education from Philippine Normal University in Manila, Philippines. During my free time, I like to read news and random stuff online. I also like to watch funny and musical videos from a popular online video platform when I want to unwind. Well, I'm sure lots of our students can connect with that. Do you have a favorite video that you've been watching during our quarantine? Oh, I'm not sure if I, uh, I'm supposed to say this, but you know, I <laughs> like to watch American Idol and, and, uh, and The Voice. <laughs> Those are some good ones. So now we know a little bit about your background, but what is your mission? What do you do at NASA? Well, I know uh, that you're both you, on the same uh, mission. Yeah, let me tell you um, a bit about myself uh, more. Um, I was born in Davao Sur, Philippines. The map of the Philippines is shown uh, in the left uh, figure, if you can see uh, the picture there. Um, <clears throat> Davao Sur is located in southern Philippines. I went to Manila, located in the northern Philippines, to attend college at the Philippine Normal University. This university is basically an institution that trains students to become teachers. So I was trained to become a teacher in college. Then an, an opportunity for me to pursue a doctoral study at Washington State University came along and I seized that opportunity. In short, after four years of college, I spent another four years of graduate school to obtain a PhD degree in physics. During my PhD studies, I worked on potential application of high frequency sound in environments with reduced gravity, such as in the ISS or International Space Station. After grad school, I worked at the National Center for Physical Acoustics in Oxford, Mississippi, focusing on acoustics research. From there, I moved on to work at NASA Langley as an aerospace engineer. I am married, Andrea. Together, we have three kids. Andrea and the kids are shown in the center bottom figure. Now, if you want me to talk about the LBFT mission, which you mentioned, I can proceed. Yeah, definitely. Take it away. All right. So uh, the LBFD mission is to build the X-59 designed by NASA with supersonic technology that reduces the loudness of the sonic boom generated by that aircraft to a level that is acceptable to the public without posing a threat to, to public health. A sonic boom is an impulsive short duration noise generated by supersonic aircraft that propagates through the atmosphere away from the aircraft to the ground. So once the X-59 is built, its acoustic characteristics will be validated to make sure that we are correct with our prediction that the X-59 will generate a low amplitude sonic boom called low boom that is acceptable to humans. Only then will we conduct community overflight tests on select places across the country. The data on human responses to the low booms collected during these community tests will be delivered to the Federal Aviation Administration in the US and to international aviation regulators, such as the International Civil Aviation Organization or ICAO. So what does that mean then for people at home? Yes, yeah, so that like means... How fast will it fly? Go ahead, Joel. So the X-59 is also known as the Quiet Supersonic Technology, or Quest aircraft. 
It is designed to fly at a speed of Mach 1.4, which is about 1.4, or which is 1.4 times the speed of sound. That is faster than 900 miles per hour, or uh, faster than 1,500 kilometers per hour. Its cruising altitude will be at 54,000 feet, which is almost 20,000 feet above uh, the cruising altitude of today's commercial airliners. The X-59 will be 95 foot long and will be piloted by just one person. It is designed to be without front windows because of its extremely long nose. It will be equipped with computer screen, computer screens for maneuver and navigational purposes. The X-59 will continuously generate a low boom during the entire time the plane is flying faster than the speed of sound. So if we were flying from New York to California across the U.S., about how long would that take? Um, approximately two hours. Currently, it takes about five hours to fly from New York City to Los Angeles. Much faster. It would completely change how we might travel if this was to become something in our commercial airspace. Yeah, that's why it's very exciting <laughs> for us to work on this project. <laughs> so then what do you do on the project? Can you tell us a little bit more about your specific roles? Sure. So Joel and I do a lot of computer programming uh, right, off, right off the bat, I guess. Uh, we've done a lot of other fun stuff too, like sometimes we get to go out and record sonic booms at these flight tests. Um, but our, our main role is the atmospheric propagation research of these um, supersonic signatures, we call them. And we're trying to understand the atmospheric effects that the um, atmosphere, you know, has on the shocky sonic boom signature from the X-59. And uh, as for me, you know, just like what Will said, uh, I've also been very much interested in acoustic propagation in the atmosphere, and I'm lucky to get that I get to do what I love to do, while at the same time supporting one of NASA's projects, which is to enable commercial supersonic travel over land. And uh, my main work is to model the propagation of shock waves and sonic booms generated by supersonic aircraft. I do physics-based modeling to accurately predict the direction and strength reduction of these sonic booms as they travel away from the aircraft to the ground through the atmosphere. I uh, also use Fortran, which is a computer programming language, to translate my physical models into binaries that computers can read. I also help uh, collect acoustic measurements and use the measurements to validate or improve the models. One of the fun stuff I, uh, I do at NASA is give presentations about my most recent results or activities. Yeah, the outreach so is always really mention. fun. Yeah, I think we all do a lot of presentations around here. But I heard you mention Fortran. So that's one of the computer programming languages you use. But are there any other languages you use or that you learned before Fortran? Yeah, yeah. Um, I use, I also use C++ and uh, other uh, computer programming language languages that uh, probably Will can tell us. Yeah, we, we use MATLAB a lot as well and Python. Um, my introduction to programming was through uh, Lego Robotics. So we, we programmed a sumo wrestling robot. And then moving through college, we did a lot of data an an analysis with uh, MATLAB. And since working at NASA, we've used Python for a lot of things, including getting ready for uh, doing big propagation simulation runs on supercomputers. For those that might not know what a supercomputer is, how would you describe a supercomputer? Yeah, a supercomputer is a big network of different processors that you can communicate with. Um, it just gives you a much bigger platform to run your calculations on than, say, your laptop or your iPad or your desktop computer at home. 
Well, before we start moving into some of our questions that we're getting from our viewers, do you have any big thoughts you want to share? Or are you ready to start some questions? I'm ready for questions if you are, Joel. Yeah, I am. I'm ready for the questions. So our first question is, I would love to know about some of the trials you faced. Engineering is difficult, and what challenges did you face through your journey? Oh, that's that's a tough right, question. <laughs> well, you know, um, my journey has been like a, a roller coaster full of ups and downs, but uh, the thing that really keeps me going is just to knowing that, you know, I, I have the ability and the talent and the skills, and I just need to, uh, uh, to keep going. And now, you know, I'm working at NASA Langley. Yeah, I think similar for me, it's, you know, staying sharp and putting as much effort in as you possibly can to get where you need to be. I remember just staying up super late in college, trying to complete my physics homework and always going in for help when I needed it. And I think that's probably the biggest thing is knowing when to ask for help and keeping, keeping at it. And our next question is, what advice would you give those students who are considering STEM degrees and careers? I heard you say really keeping at it and following through. What else might you tell a student who's thinking about going into STEM? I'll be curious. A ask questions. Um, I guess follow what, what's, what you're passionate about, but also like be open to learning something completely new tomorrow, today, every day. And, you know, for me, uh, if you want to help advance human knowledge in science and engineering, then pursue a career in STEM or science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Pursue your passion and work hard to be the best that you can be. And as for, for which college you should attend, um, it depends. Ask yourself what you want to become. Then identify universities that offer the programs of your choice. Um, you can even try to um, communicate to university professors or experts on your uh, chosen program of studies. Did you both know that you always wanted to work at NASA, or was that something you learned along the way? Um, for me, not really. Um, you know, but my PhD research project was supported by a grant from, uh, from NASA to conduct research on the potential applications of high frequency sounds in environments with reduced gravity, such as in the ISS or International Space Station. So uh, the short answer to your question is no, I, I did not have any idea that uh, I'll be working at NASA Langley. Yeah, I, I am sort of am similar where I didn't know exactly where I wanted to work, but because NASA, you know, to me, it seemed like such an inspiring workplace that I wasn't sure that I would ever be able to get there. But um, these opportunities, when they present themselves to you, definitely go for them like I was on this NASA fellowship that really uh, uh, or I applied for this NASA fellowship that was just like I don't know if I'll get it but we'll try and uh, yeah the rest sort of just fell into place after that so there's internship opportunities fellowship opportunities um, tons of opportunities to get you involved with NASA um, even before going to college there's some uh, like high school internship programs too, should look into. Yeah, definitely. And even connecting with NASA through video chats like this and activities, yeah. there's all types of way to get involved that you might not know about. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite part about your job or favorite thing about working at NASA? It sort of changes for me day to day, but Today, my favorite thing would have to be participating in the awesome flight tests that we do. Um, I've just, I've learned so much about the difficulties of large scale data collection of sonic booms, for example, and there's so many pieces of the puzzle and it's, it's amazing to see it all come together. 
And then at the end of the day, you have such a greater appreciation for the data that you later analyze after you've been out in the field bringing the data home. So that's my favorite part. And for me, um, the project that I'm really ex excited about is figuring out how uh, we can leverage our knowledge on shock wave or sonic boom propagation through the atmosphere to reduce the loudness of, the son of, of, of that sonic boom once it reaches the ground. Yeah, and was there anything about NASA that you didn't know until you got here, something that you learned that you wish you would have known before? For me, I, mean, I know I this think... is kind of silly to say, but I didn't even know that NASA did a lot of work with aeronautics until I joined NASA. And now here I am, and I do a lot of work with aeronautics for NASA, but it was something that I wish I would have known before because NASA does a lot of research and almost every plane that will ever fly on was somehow influenced by NASA, and I had no idea. Well, now that you mentioned it, you just reminded me uh, um, about the fact that NASA has several centers across the country, and I did not know that. Uh, well, I, I knew uh, a few, but I didn't know that there are about nine NASA centers spread out across the country. Yeah, and it's been cool to like get to work with people who live on the opposite coast from us. We're on video conferences similar to this with people weekly, really, where we are coming together and converging on the goals of the project with people all over the country, even the world, too. We work with some international partners as well, which uh, really gives you some perspective of the breadth of NASA in general. And then we only have time for a few more questions, but one that I've been getting is, who is your role model? Or who was your role model when you were growing up? Joel Lanzaga is one of my role models. He's actually <laughs> my office mate. Uh, growing up, I had an older brother, like I said, three years older than me. He was my best friend and he gave me lots of insight into things that were important. I think my family as well. And I've had a lot of good mentors in school and through those internships. And so the more you get involved, the more people um, you have who can help you out, the more people that you can help out. Well, thanks for that, Will. <laughs> well, for me, my, uh, I guess one of my role models growing up is my, is my uh, high school science teacher. He was very good and uh, he kept uh, encouraging me to pursue a career in STEM. And uh, he actually helped me to uh, land a scholarship um, in the Philippines, an undergraduate scholarship to uh, pursue a career in science. And that's how I got to uh, obtain a degree in uh, physics education in the Philippines. And then uh, while in college, you know, I was, well, I guess I was still growing up in college. <laughs> my, uh, uh, Albert Einstein was my, uh, was my model and he still is <laughs> just amazing how you know how wonderful his uh, his um, discoveries are and we are still trying to understand uh, the depths of his discoveries especially in general theory of relativity And another question we have is, can you tell us a little bit more about how you chose which college to go to or how you knew that it was the right choice? Sure. Um, so for me, Gustavus Adolphus College was definitely one of my favorite four year sets of my life. Um, it, I was lucky that I was able to visit there and um, I met a bunch of the physics professors and it was, it's, it's very hard to choose a college, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but once you see a college that has all the programs and you, you feel like you're going to fit in there, um, you'll get a good sense of it being the right fit for you, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, for me, 
while I was in high school, my uh, my parents were really poor, and uh, you know I didn't even know if I was if I would be able to go to college. So this uh, uh, this advisor of mine in high school that I that that I was talking about, uh, he uh, recommended that I would uh, apply for the scholarship, and uh, you know I I applied for the scholarship. I took the uh, the entrance exam and I passed it. And so I was able to uh, to get that scholarship and uh, attended. I was able to attend uh, this uh, university in Manila, Philippine Normal University, uh, where I obtained my uh, my four year degree in physics education. And then after that, after working uh, for two years or uh, three years, one of my colleagues at that university where I was working told me about um, a a fellowship at Washington State University. So that's how I got to. Uh, you know, to travel from uh, from the Philippines, which is on the other side of, uh, of the globe, to Washington State University. Okay. And you know, the rest is history. <laughs> so we are just almost out of time, but for our last little bit, do you have any advice you would like to leave with students? Or you know, any last imparting wisdom about the mission, about your journey? All I can say is, you know, um, pursue your passion and uh, and really work hard, because there's no uh, there's no substitution to uh, to hard work. And uh, just keep at it. And uh, obstacles may uh, come along your way, but uh, don't feel disheartened. Just keep thinking about your your goal in life, and keep looking at the big picture. I think I'd have to echo what Joel said. Definitely keep putting in as much effort as you can. Always ask for help and help others along the way. It's good to build a team of nurturing people around you to help you achieve your goals. I think that's some great advice. Follow your passion and work hard. Now, for all of you at home, we encourage you to do your mission. So we have created a mission for you that goes along with a little bit about what you heard today. So first, we encourage you to follow the URL that's on the slide and collect noise data at your home. Part of the low boom flight demonstration mission will be collecting that noise data. And we encourage you to be your own citizen scientist at home and collect some noise data. And then create your own model X59 or X59 Quest. Use whatever you can find at home that you might have available. We're all about repurposing our materials here at NASA and using what we have available. In fact, even parts of the X59 come from prior aircraft that have been retired. So use what you can find and then share your work on social media back with us and we might be able to feature you in our next webinar. So if you use the hashtag NextGenSTEM, as you can see on this slide there, we might see it and get it featured. But you'll have to tune in to our next webinar to know if you got yours included. We're hoping to see as many of yours as we can, and we can't wait to see you for our next webinar where we're going to talk about veggie. It's all about veggie up on the International Space Station. We have some great guest host for this next one and that one will be april 30th at 2 p.m eastern so again thank you will and joel for being such great hosts with me today i'm sure it looks like our students really love to get to talk to you and ask you some questions and we hope you had just as much fun as we did yeah thanks so thank much for having us, us.